Hey, what's up, fight fans? I'm Joe McHale alongside Daniel Spitz, UFC heavyweight, and this is Joe and the Big Guy, episode three. We like to break down fights here on this show, and that's what we're going to be doing for you. UFC 231 from Toronto is this Saturday, and it's a good card. Two title fights. We've got Brian Ortega taking on Max Holloway for the featherweight title, and then Valentina Chevchenko, who is facing off against Ioana and Jacek for the women's flyweight title. Good card, huh? Yeah, it's an excellent card, top to bottom. But the main main weight in this card is definitely the two title fights. But Spitz, before we get to those title fights, I want to talk about uh, one of the a couple of the bouts that are earlier on in the night, specifically in the light heavyweight division. Jimmy Manawa, Tego Santos might be a barn burner. Yeah, this fight's not going all three rounds. <laughs> We've seen Jimmy Manoa. He really hasn't lived up to that UFC hype. He's had a couple big knockouts, Corey Anderson, OSP, but he is coming off a two-fight slide. He's lost his last two, one by knockout, one by split decision, whereas Thiago Santos, he's in a new weight class. He was just in a potential fight of the year with Eric Anders. He has all that momentum coming up. So it's really going to... Is Jimmy Manoa going to solidify that position, or is Thiago Santos going to be that new up and comer and really, you know, put himself in that title hunt? Right, twenty-eight knockouts between the two of them, similar styles. And then you look at another fight on that card just before that: Gunnar Nelson, uh, Alex Oliveira. They have very different styles. One submission artist, the other. He likes to throw heavy punches in Cowboy. Uh, how do you see that fight going? What's your breakdown of this one? Yeah, I just think Cowboy's a little too wild for Gunner. You know, Gunner, he, he's a seasoned vet. He's a very experienced grappler, mm -hmm. and he's been in there with some great fighters. Mm -hmm. So he comes from a very good gym. I just see Gunner getting that finished. Yep, absolutely. 12 submissions. Uh, you think he's going to do get a 13th uh, on his record here? Yeah, yeah. I think he finishes by submission here. Okay, very Definitely. good. Definitely. Yeah. And then we move on to the co-main event. That is uh, the much-anticipated fight between Valentina Chevchenko and Joanna Yenjechek. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to be a really fun fight to watch. I know we've talked about it before. It's tough to see Joanna winning this fight. But if she's going to, Daniel... What does she need to do? You know, Ioana has to win this like she's won a lot of her other fights. And it's like a good one to use as a reference is Jessica Andrade. Mm -hmm. That bully pit bull style that I think that Valentina is going to use against her. You know, she used her footwork really well. She threw a ton of volume in that fight. And she stayed off the fence. You know, when she was pushed up against the fence, she showed great takedown defense. She showed great hips. Is she going to be able to do that against a much bigger opponent, though? That's the real question. And Spitz, something that's really unique about this fight that we've never seen before is this is a title fight where these two have actually met before outside of the octagon. They competed against each other in Muay Thai three times. Shevchenko won all three of those fights. Did we get into the mental aspect of this now where Joanna's gone, I've already lost to her three times? I know MMA and Muay Thai are very, very different, but does that play a factor in this fight? Yeah, I mean, you kind of think it has to, right? Because that early in her career, she was she was beat up three times. None of those fights were... I've watched them. I didn't think they were really that close. So is she going to have that kind of big sis, I guess, big sister feel to it, you know, where it's like, I've already beat you up once before. You're coming up to me. It's going to be the same story. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> that, uh, you know, Chevchenko, a lot of people... She's the bigger fighter, but that doesn't necessarily mean she's going to be slower. I've seen how she throws that left hand. You know, she's a southpaw, mm -hmm. and how she throws her right, her hook, that front, that front hook. Mm -hmm. She's just really, really dangerous on the feet. And Joanna's going to have to what? Keep her distance, I guess. Yeah, she's going to have to be on her bike a lot this fight. You know, if she's going to try and. Like, we saw, her, we saw her try and trade in the pocket with the type of Rose, you know? Mm -hmm. Rose caught her. That's just because she didn't really respect that power. And she has had a lot of wear and tear on her. You know, she's been in a lot of those title fights. It's such a big task for Ioana. I want to see her get it done, but a little too much. And Chevchenko, too, she throws a lot of unorthodox stuff. Mm -hmm. Spinning back fists, uh, Superman punches. You think at any point where some of the tricks that she has in the bag aren't necessarily working against Ioana, she probably knows that she could take her down if she wants to, like yeah. she did against Juliana Pena. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the fight goes that way in the later rounds if she feels like maybe the striking battle is a little too close? Yeah, that is another big, big feather that Valentina has in her cap. We've seen her grappling. No one in the UFC has really seen you on a striking or grappling because her striking pedigree is so high. So is she going to be able to counter that? And is she just going to be ragdolled? You know, like. Holly Holm, who is you know mm -hmm. a traditional uh, stand-up fighter, while well, she's a, she's a southpaw, she was able to drop 
Chevchenko when the two of them fought. Mm-hmm. Does Joanna uh, possess that sort of power? We haven't seen it yet. You know, all of her finishes, like when she finished uh, Carla Esparza, mm-hmm. was volume. She didn't finish her like one shot drop. You know, that was mm-hmm. over two rounds of a lot of punches. I don't think she has that type of power. I think Valentina knows that also. So we're going to see Valentina walking her down, mm-hmm. kind of imposing herself as the bigger, more dominant fighter. Valentina's been in some wars with the current champ, Amanda Nunez. She shows that she definitely has the heart of a champion. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, a tough task for Joanna to go ahead and win this one. I think we agree. Yeah. Chevchenko wins this fight. Uh, how do you see her getting it done? I think she finishes her before three. Okay. Can't can't put a put a exact time on the round, but you know if Rose was able to drop her the way she was, mm-hmm. Valentina's been in there, like you said, with Amanda. Amanda's got some serious power. Mm-hmm. I just yeah, yeah, too much stacked against Yolanda here. Mm-hmm. You know? In the main event, uh, we have Max Holloway making a return. He kind of had a rough 2018, yeah. health issues, injuries. Uh, you know, he had to back out against the fight, uh, the potential fight he was going to have against Khabib Nurmagomedov mm-hmm. a few months back. And he's taken on a young, up-and-comer, exciting guy, never lost in his career. That, of course, being Brian T. City Ortega. I am really looking forward to this one. Definitely. Uh, this is two guys who, they go in there with that same game plan. Mm-hmm. It's, my aggression is going to break you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a pace that you can't keep up with. In the sense of Brian, he puts that pace on you and he eventually gets you to shoot and submits you. Or we've been seeing him adding those two new tools in, like when he fought Frankie. He finished Frankie. No one thought that was possible. Everybody thought, you know, he'll submit him. But we do see with these young, especially young undefeated fighters, we get a new product each time they step in. Mm -hmm. That four or however many months he's been out, Like, we're going to see a totally different new Brian, which is pretty scary. Kind of like Max Holloway. Mm -hmm. We were talking about how the the guy entered the UFC when he was a kid, 20 years old. And he is a completely different fighter than he was then. And he almost, every time you saw Max Holloway, you saw something new, something different. How fast that he was able to excel. He's been out for a little bit. Are we going to see a Max Holloway at his best this fight, do you think? So that's the big question because we have had those health issues. He had to withdraw from 226 mm-hmm. over the summer. He had to withdraw, I believe it was 226. Big yeah. part of it. Yeah, he had to withdraw from the Khabib fight. Mm-hmm. Now, that might just be the New York Athletic Commission being a little stingy on the weight cut. We don't really know. Right. But there is a lot of, are we going to see that Max Holloway who went down to Brazil? took the belt from Jose, or are we going to see an older Max Holloway that might need to move up to lightweight? Yeah, he's had tough <clears throat> making that, that weight cut before. Um, but the guy, obviously, uh, his record shows it. He's so dominant. Mm-hmm. And what he does so well, I think, is he knows how to shift the gears, go yeah. from first to second to third. You don't see him come out guns blazing very often. Mm-hmm. He has a very much of a feeling out process. Uh, he's, he's done. We've seen that against Jose Aldo. We've seen that against Cub Swanson. Um, uh, some of these other guys that he's fought. And what I like to bring up sometimes as an example of that is the Ricardo Lamas fight. Mm-hmm. Earlier in that fight, he was taking some leg kicks. A little later in that fight, he started to check them. And then eventually, he started to counter off those leg kicks. So he's calculating his opponent. Mm -hmm. He's so good at that, figuring out what his opponent is doing and then figuring out a way to use that uh, eventually against his opponent. Um, But like you said, Ortega is really good at finding rhythms as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think the beautiful part of this fight is both fighters strive in chaos so mm-hmm. well. Like we see those like very fancy strikers, like Cubs a good example. Mm-hmm. Amazing striker, great pedigree, but he really doesn't like when he's been against, you know, their similar opponent. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do that well in the chaos. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, you see Holloway in there, he's, you know, hands up, you know, yeah. in Aldo's face. He's mm-hmm. he strives in that that chaos environment. Right. Whereas Brian Ortega, you know, when he fought Thiago Tafaras, he arguably had lost the first two rounds, goes out there, knows he's going to finish him in the third. You see when he fights Clay Guida. Right. Another yeah. perfect example if that fight went 30 seconds or however much longer before he lands that knee, he's losing the decision. Right. So Brian goes in there with that same mindset that Max is going in that. Regardless of where he's at in the fight, time-wise, he's going to win. He's going to finish. Right. 
What I love about Max is he's able to hit you from the other side of the octagon. Yeah. He manages range better than any fighter I feel like I've, I've seen in a very, very long time. How does Ortega handle that in this fight? It's going to be interesting, right? Because they both have the same reach, but mm-hmm. I think they both use it very differently. Right. Brian is so confident in his submission game and his grappling because he's been on those Gracie mats since he was a little baby. You know, that he's able to fight in more of a Western boxing style where he uses a shoulder roll. He uses almost that Philly shelf better than most people will because they don't really have to worry about, he doesn't have to worry about being taken down. Mm -hmm. Whereas Max Holloway, he's more, he's longer, he's he's more drawn out. His punches, they're not coming from, you know, a mile away, Mm -hmm. but he's touching you consistently, like you're saying, more and more each round until he eventually puts you out. Yeah, and you bring that up, Fight Metric. It's a really interesting website, and I was looking at it earlier, and it shows that Max Holloway, as the fight gets deeper, not only does his punching accuracy increase, but his um, output. Mm -hmm. So he's going to throw more, and he's going to land more consistently as the fight goes on. Does that mean Ortega needs to try and take that fight to him early? I don't think so, just because we've seen Ortega successful finishing people in the third round. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think Ortega, unless it is by submission, I don't think he possesses the knockout power to finish Max in the first round. Mm -hmm. You know, just from Max's prior fights. He's fought Pettis. I mean, Connor couldn't get him out of there. Aldo couldn't get him out of there in eight plus rounds. I just don't think Brian possesses that kind of power. Mm -hmm. Now, if Max somehow gets in a grappling position, that's a totally different world. Obviously, we know, Daniel, in this fight that if Ortega is able to get Holloway to the ground, that's going to be where he's going to have the most uh, chance and being most successful in winning this fight. But how does he do that against a guy like Holloway, who is very, very good at defending the takedown? In fact, he defends it eight out of more than eight out of ten takedowns. Yeah, so what's interesting about Brian Ortega's style is he does come from that predominantly jiu-jitsu style, and a lot of his finishes are these amazing submissions that he seems to do effortlessly but the way he's setting them up is with his striking and with his pace not with the takedown yeah he's not he's not shooting a double leg he's not trying to get a clinch when he does get that clinch he's almost doing what you're kind of told not to he's reaching over for the head Mm -hmm. getting in that front headlock that guillotine position to where he can transition to triangles and arm bars he's not afraid of ever pulling guard so we might see that in this fight you know because i do think that what you're saying, Max Holloway's takedown defense is too good to really expect Brian to take him down in the first couple rounds. Mm-hmm. You know, he's too physically imposing. He's too big. He's been in there with too many high level guys. Mm-hmm. But when it gets to the third and the fourth round and he starts to get tired, might be a different story. I don't think we'll see Brian Ortega shoot in this fight, though. I I think I agree with you on that. This Mm. is a fight that's almost too close to call. (laughs) Uh, The odds that the lines in Vegas are just so slim, obviously uh, it could be anyone's fight. I'll give you my thoughts, but first I'm going to get a prediction from you. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't bet on this fight, obviously, (laughs) because it's too hard to bet on. But, you know, Max has been too proven of a champion. Mm -hmm. And as much as I like Brian, I love his style. It's awesome seeing a traditional jiu-jitsu guy in there. Max has been in so many title fights with high-level guys. He's just, he's he's grown up in the UFC. He has more experience. I think that's going to be pivotal mm-hmm. when this fight makes it to the fourth and fifth rounds. And I think Max comes away with a decision. I actually agree with you. I have it written down here that I think that Max wins this fight. Uh, it goes five rounds. It's mm-hmm. a decision. It's unanimous. It's not a split decision. And uh, blessed him gives T-City his first professional loss. Yeah. So, should be a fun one to watch. I'm yeah. looking forward fans, to it. Fans fans definitely win. Regardless who wins this fight, the fans the fans are going to yeah, win. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just cross our fingers that when they step on the scale, they both make Everyone 45. makes championship weight. It's just yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And of course, you can catch those fights. It's this Saturday uh, from Toronto, Canada. They start at 7 o'clock. The main card does the prelims on FS1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys, this See was you guys fun there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for doing this again. I always enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys there. Tune in.